Yo, what's good, everybody? In today's video, I'm going to be talking about kill zones and pathing. Um, I'm going to explain what kill zones are. I'm going to explain how you can kind of determine which path is the path that you should be taking when you're entering these sites. Uh, and yeah, let's just get started with the video. It should be a shorter one, but I think this is something that's very important. I've been running into this, this problem with a lot of students in private sessions, so I wanted to make a content piece about this for you guys. So let's start by de describing and defining what a kill zone is, okay? And let's use Valoplant as our tool today. A kill zone is an area that I'm going to be marking in red, and it's just an area where the attack side is open to a multitude of angles, and the and they are an unable to isolate angles, okay? These are kill zones, okay? And I'll draw the angles that they're exposed to in green. Okay? You see how... You see how these red areas, these kill zones are not very advantageous places to stand if you're an attack sider because you have to worry about right, left, you know, up, down. All of these different angles are hard to watch. Um, and so what you want to do when you're pathing is you want to limit the amount of places that you can get shot from. All right, this is the most important thing. I think people are always caught up on, oh, I saw Aspas do this crazy double satchel or I saw Jing do this insane pathing on, on split. Or, oh, Demon Demon 1's updraft dash was so cool and he pathed this way. Guys, these are VCT level players with VCT level support util. You are not going to get that level of support in your ranked games. What you need to do is you need to understand which areas are super dangerous on the map. And you need to think, okay, how can I get from point A to point B and get through this area, this contested area or this kill zone, without spending a lot of time there, um... And, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And if you kind of approach things logically and understand, okay, this is a bad area for me to be in because there's this angle, this angle, and this angle, you'll eventually avoid being in those areas or you'll start to use util to kind of assist you getting through those areas. Um, you use smokes, you'll ask for flashes, you'll use your nades, you'll satchel, you'll, you'll dash through them. All of these things are important ways that you can kind of avoid kill zones. And one thing that I, I think helps a lot of students uh, that I've brought up before, is just imagine that these kill zones are just brim mollied, okay? But you can run, th you run through them, but, but you know, maybe a kill zone molly is better. Brim molly hurts. You don't want to spend a lot of time in these kill zones. If you, if you can get through them without stopping, that is the goal, all right? And so, now that we have our kill zones marked with these brim mollies, I want to talk about the no zone, all right? No zones are areas where the enemy is exposed to no angles except for the one that they want to. So they, they don't have to worry. They, they, they can angle isolate all they want, right? And then the defense has no advantage in these fights, okay? That's the other reason why they're called no zones, all right? Now think about these. In these white zones... Let me go in game here. So we got one, two, three, four. Okay. These are the four zones. If I go over to C, and if I'm, can I isolate and fight whichever angle I want up here? Yeah, right. Can I come here and only hold this? Yeah. Can I hold this? Yeah. I could, I can isolate these angles as much as I want, right? But when I get here, do I have to worry about this, this, this? this, 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 and this? Yeah. So the defenders should not want to fight me or peek me while I'm in the back here. They should want to fight me when I'm in this area. And generally, that's why crossfires are so strong, guys. Crossfires should be focused on fighting the enemy while they're in the, in the, uh, in the kill zone, okay? So one person holds on defense holding the contact here. Another person gets ready to swing off of it, okay? That is the whole concept of it. But if you're fighting people in these no zones, there's no type of crossfire available because the only angle that you can beat them on is the one that the enemy is looking at, okay? Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. This concept is really important. So really, to put it into practice, try to determine what areas of each of the maps are kill zones, 
which ones are no zones. On attack side, spend as little time in the kill zones and spend as much time in the no zones. On defense, fight as many people in the kill zones and fight as few people in the no zones. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you know you guys are able to take this and implement this into your ranked games. It's very, very important. It'll help you take less risky fights and get you more kills with your brain and less kills with your aim, okay? Um, which is what we want. We want as many free kills or easy kills as possible as players. Now what I want to talk about is pathing through these kill zones and determining which way you should be going, okay? Now, if we use front B as an example, and I think this is probably my favorite example in the game, there is a, this is our kill zone. Here. Let me mark it. Here. Here. It's maybe a little bit bigger. So this square here, right? I want to spend as little time in this zone as possible. So I can go either right or I can go left, right? Those are the two options, or I can go straight through. If you're playing jet, you can, you can dash through, right? But let's just say we're not using util and we gotta decide which one we're gonna go through, left or right, okay? Or center, or straight through, okay? And we'll talk about the strengths and weaknesses of all three. The strength of going straight through is what? It's a straight line, it's the, the fastest point from point A, the, the fastest distance from point A to point B, is gonna be a straight line, right? What's the disadvantage? If you're running straight at somebody and they peek you, there's no variance in how you're moving left or right, correct? So you you are a very easy target, okay? If you go right, you get out of the kill zone quickly, but you're still exposed Here. to a lot of different angles, Here. correct? Here. You're still exposed to this, Here. this, and this, right? So you're not really eliminating or isolating angles. But if you decide to go left, look how these angles disappear. One, two, and watch this. When I go left like this, what am I open to? I'm still open to secret. I'm still open to heaven run out, and I'm still open to, to waterfall run out or sea link. But what am I forcing the enemy team to do? You're giving, you're inviting them to make mistakes. The mistake that the enemy team would make is over swinging this way or over swinging out heaven to kill you. And the reason for that is because all of your teammates that could potentially be in the no zone are able to isolate these fights and cover you while you're entering the site. You, you know, your teammates could also be running in with you, but the, the likelihood of somebody getting traded that wide, wide swings like this is probably like five or six times the, the, the likelihood of somebody getting traded that just goes, peaks and kills you here, right? I hope this makes sense to you guys. I hope this is something that you, you can kind of comprehend and digest it's very, very important. When you're determining which way you should be pathing, don't watch all these don't watch all these pro vods and see what these teams are doing because a lot of it is util driven. A lot of their pathing is util driven. Try to think logically. Try to go from point A to point B. Determine what the path the path of least resistance is, and usually the path of least resistance is going to be the the path that has the uh, the least amount of angle angles looking at you or the most amount of angle isolation for you. I hope this video makes sense. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments down below, or if you like this type of content, please let me know. I'm more than happy to continue doing little fundamental things like this. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys are able to identify kill zones and kind of start pathing and avoiding these, uh, you know, these risky fights and, be, and, and, and isolate angles a lot better than you have been in the past. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.